Magnus Carlsen makes his way to the board. He's early to the game. That's not often the case, but today he is here. He has the black pieces against SL Narayanan from India at the Tata Steel Chess India Rapid 2024. This is round number four and it's the first game of day two. And there we have Narayanan making his way a handshake and it's going to be a very important game. SL Narayanan was asked before the tournament as to who is the player that he would like to play in this tournament and of course he replied back with Magnus Carlsen because it's a big opportunity for the Kerala lad here uh, and we are about to begin e4 by SL and Magnus responds back with the solid e5 knight comes out to f3 knight to c6 and now you have bishop to b5 the Rui Lopez Magnus just looks a little bit to the side to just feel from within what he wants to play today you know that's how i guess top players decide on their openings if they haven't prepared much they just try to look within what are they feeling for today's game and now castles and he puts his bishop on e7 queen e2 by sl this is slightly weird because generally you go uh, with rook e1 and Magnus pushes his pawn to d6. c3 played. He wants to play rook d1 and d4. That's how generally you go. Castles by Magnus. He's playing very simple and solid chess. And SL does bring his rook to d1. Magnus now calmly puts his bishop on d7. Not expecting. Spending too much of time just playing simple chess bishop b3 and now knight to a5 attacking the bishop the bishop goes back c5 you can see that Narayanan has surprised Magnus because the time on Narayanan's clock is 25 minutes while Magnus is down to 20 minutes he brings his queen to c7 but you know while Narayanan has prepared something here I think Magnus is just more playing on understanding. So, you know, he gains space now with b5. He knows this structure well. And b3 played here. This is a good position here for white. Slightly better. Now, g6 is played. And Narayanan brings his knight out to d2. Magnus plays knight b7. Now, this knight often becomes a problem piece. Let's see how Magnus deals with it. He goes knight h5, looking for maybe f5 at the right time. But first, bishop h6 by Narayanan, attacking the rook. And the knight drops back to g7. And knight comes to g3. f5 is not easy to execute just yet. White is well prepared. So Magnus first goes f6. And after a4 is played in the position, he brings his rook to b8. You will see that Magnus is slowly and steadily trying to improve his pieces. A, B, A, B. And now goes Bishop D3. Narayanan putting pressure on the B5 pawn. Magnus brings his queen up to defend the pawn. And Narayanan makes a small strategic error, I feel, with B4. Because it allows C4... Bishop c2, I understand that the pawn structure is now locked. But it's locked in a way where black has slightly more space and white is a bit cramped. So knight d8. And now the knight comes back to d2. He goes queen b7, defending this square so that you know you can trade rooks. Bishop e3 comes back. And Magnus now first trades one pair of rooks. And now brings the rook to a8. He understands that a file is his. Because even if white plays queen d1, he can go rook a6 and queen a7. So Narayanan avoids the rook trade and goes rook f1. Magnus enters the position with rook to a3. He's attacking the pawn on c3 but Narayanan goes f4. Fantastic. Because if you take here, knight b1 traps the rook. So he's seen this. Knight f7 and now an error. Fe. 
he should have pushed forward with f5 and white has a decent position but after fe now black plays the move de and the bishop opens up a bit the d6 square is freed up so knight to b1 and now magnus pins the bishop by rook a2 Narayanan pushes his pawn to h3. Well, it seems like Magnus is slowly and steadily going to grind this position. He goes 98. Now you can see both the knights are looking at the d6 square. Goes bishop c5 and wants to trade the bishops. This f6 point is a bit soft. But for now, Magnus jumps with his knight to d6. His pieces are somehow more flowing in the position. King h2 played here by Narayanan. It's still a very complex position. Although Magnus is better, the reason is he has the open a file and also the possibility to break with f5 at the right moment. And while white has to majorly just wait here. Queen d8. Magnus is enjoying himself. He's not taking any drastic steps just yet queen d1 played and now bishop comes to f8 he goes bishop e3 stopping maybe bishop h6 coming out there and he goes anyway bishop h6 offering a trade of bishops narayanan can take it yes he does knight takes h6 so magnus has gotten rid of his bad bishop which has improved his position slightly. Knight d2 by Narayanan. But the question is, how is he going to make further progress? He goes king g7. And now knight to f1. So the knight is coming to e3. But okay, the white knights don't really have great squares to go to. Meanwhile, Magnus goes knight g7, knight f7. He wants to go maybe knight g5 later on. Queen comes to f3, putting some pressure on the f6 point here. Magnus goes rook a3, just pinning here. The c3 pawn is weak and he's keeping an eye on it. Now, queen comes to e3. If he gets a chance, he may want to infiltrate via the c5 square. For now, queen a8 played here. And he goes queen f3 again putting pressure on the f6 pawn magnus brings his knight back to e8 and narayanan plays his knight to e2 queen comes up to a7 taking control of this important diagonal the knight jumps up to e3 and now knight to g5 attacking the queen Queen g3 played. And what is Magnus going to do next? He brings his other knight. The pressure on the e4 pawn is mounting. Knight f4, desperate move. If he takes, he wants to take back, attacking the knight and the pawn. Just trying to create some kind of a mess. But Magnus looks deep into the position and then chops off this free pawn. And Narayanan has had enough. He resigns. Magnus actually did not do anything special in this game. All that he did was kept control, kept maneuvering his pieces, took control of certain squares and files. And his opponent collapsed. Narayanan asks him what was the error that he made. And uh, Magnus, maybe he's talking about this b4 move where c4 came in and gained space weakening the c3 square that was the perhaps one of the critical errors but then again magnus really showed some great maneuvering ability that is what he's famed for keeping control uh, even if you know the opponent is moving around both of them when they move around magnus is just much better at that and that was a nice win in fact after uh, the three games I managed to ask Magnus a bit about this game and uh, he said he played like an old man here. Uh, so I'm just going to put the small excerpt from that interview.
with SL Narayanan, you just outplayed him with the black pieces. What went wrong for him? Yeah, I kind of played old man's chess in that game. Like, no, uh, no long variations, just positional chess. And I think he made a couple of crucial uh, positional mistakes, and then it was very, very difficult for him. Um, so, yeah, it felt good um, to, you know, to get going that way. Uh, 